cloudless rain here. I hate that kind of intro. Like, skip here with your daily sports update. Cloudless rain here with your daily psychonaut update. Anyway, uh, I want to talk today a little bit, or deal with, uh, in several ways, talking and also smoking towards, uh, the uh, topic of association and dissociation because it's one of my favorite philosophic and spiritual psychological kinds of topics and it happens to be very relevant for Salvia Divinorum because it is uh, labeled as a dissociative so we'll kind of deal with why that is and what's going on with that so uh, Basically, in, in like conventional psychology, dissociation is usually viewed as a bad thing, okay? Because what they mean by dissociation is that you're dissociating from your emotions and therefore kind of not feeling them, pushing them off, or dissociating from your actions, uh, dissociating from your memories, so you end up like repressing your memories and making yourself small, right? Um, but on the other hand, when it comes to uh, uh, drugs, uh, particularly like there are certain dissociative drugs. Um, DXM, I believe, I've never used, but is salvia obviously is a very dissociative. Uh, ketamine, which I really, really like, is a dissociative. Uh, let's see, ibogaine, I've never used. That's a dissociative. And all of these substances and this dissociated state are associated with uh, the ability to self-heal and to grow spiritually. So what's going on with that? Why the contradiction? Well, there's a difference because we use dissociation in a couple of different ways. Ah, my nose is itchy. Mm. And it is my nose, not just the nose that's itchy, not an externalized nose that is itchy. It is my nose, part of me. You see, the game of association and dissociation is is what we're talking about here, right? And the nose that just happens to be part of my subjective experience is a nose. And uh, I call it mine because I am given more information about that nose than your nose. So I say that your nose is your nose. I dissociate from your nose and I associate with my nose. but. What is exactly me and what is exactly you? There is no uh, concrete line that you can point in in the sand. The sand doesn't have, you know, a line in it. And so it is movable what I associate with and what I dissociate from. So if I, let's say, an addictive pattern for, you know what, fuck this, let's smoke salvia. We'll talk about it afterward. You know, speaking of association, one reason I make videos, believe me, it's not to get paid. <laughs> one reason I make videos that does have to do with association and dissociation is because because th that, that topic has to do with identity. Who you see yourself as. And when I make a video, I see myself as a teacher, I see myself as a performer, I see myself as a, um, on one hand, a source of wisdom for others, but also a, a traveler and an explorer in my own experience and the own, um, like, like the universe. And it sort of makes me feel like a trailblazer 
you know, holding a flashlight and going out ahead, but I'm only like a, about half a step behind the people who are right behind me. And that's what I found is that the topic about who you are and who you aren't is one of the most important topics to meditate on. Listen to your own voice and you can play with the edge. Listen carefully to your own mental chatter or the chatter coming physically coming out of your mouth. It doesn't matter which way. And then play the game of either owning that voice, taking responsibility for that voice and being the source of that voice, which is what you usually do. Feel how that feels. I'm talking and it's me talking. Now I continue, I continue talking, but instead of owning the voice, I dissociate from the voice. I don't know what it's about to say, and I become a audience member to what it's about to say. I become an audience member to the voice, and this is how you dissociate from the, your own voice. And this is important because the voice coming from your mouth isn't only the voice of this separated body-mind. It is also an integrated part of the universe. And as an integrated point, part of the universe, the voice coming out of your own uh, mouth or the voice within your own head can speak for the universe itself. You're not breaking any rules to do that. You're not uh, doing something sacrilegious to call your own voice the voice of God because your body is integrated into the universe and your voice, your mind and your voice are integrated into the divine field just as your physical mouth and physical tongue and uh, physical throat are integrated into larger organism that, that you ordinarily associate with. It is perfectly acceptable and not sinful in or incorrect or irrational to associate with the entire entirety of the subjective field Right, because the part, the ego that you create to model yourself within your uh, associate, within your subjective field, is only a model of yourself. It's not the real thing. You're the whole thing, right? You're creating that whole subjective field. So too, if you see your, if you are a physicalist and you are modeling. Uh, the metaphysical reality as an externalized physical reality. Even if this is the case, your body is an integrated part of the physical reality, a fully integrated part. It's not a separate thing. You're not a separate thing living here in the universe. So too, you're not a separate ego floating around within your subjective space. You see what I'm saying? You can dissociate from the external and that's what you do most of the time. Most of the time you're living in a dualistic reality. I am the ego, right? It is my nose and that nose over there that I am also experiencing. I'm experiencing two noses. This nose. And, well, I'm not actually experiencing any nose, but what I am experiencing is thinking about the hypothetical noses of my audience members right now. And I associate and I say this is my nose and I look at all of those other hundreds thousands hundreds of thousands of viewers on this view on this video hypothetically all of them with noses and all of them they are part the notion of those noses is part of my experience right? it is literally just as much part of my experience as my nose is and yet I choose on on some level to associate and take responsibility with one and not all of the others. 
talked a lot about noses today. So you take your own voice and you accept your own voice as the voice of God. That's what I'm saying. What I'm actually saying is that you can use a deep understanding of dissociation to help you cultivate a inti intimate mystical, mystical experience with the divine. And it is only woo-woo or it is only sacrilegious if you don't actually understand the subtleties, the, the subtle cognitive and spiritual um, nature of the game of association and dissociation. You want to talk to God, you, you just accept the voice in your mind as God. You want to talk to Jesus, accept the voice in your head as Jesus. Well, it's harder when it's like a mythological, a mythological personality like Jesus. But certainly the voice of the universe, there is no reason why your voice can't be the voice of the universe. It is part of the universe. You see what I'm saying? It's very powerful stuff. What I was talking about too, before, too, is important. Something I've learned recently is that the nature of addiction has to do with association and dissociation. We dissociate from our actions. We have a pattern of actions. I drink 10 beers a day. I, this is a pattern of behavior. 10 times today, just like 10 times yesterday and 10 times the day before, I chose to drink a beer. We take that pattern and we say that's called alcoholism. That's a that's a disease because it's an addiction and now because you've called it a disease you're dissociating from the free choices that you're actually making now did you want that beer yeah are there biochemical reasons that make the you know dopamine and shit that ramp up that desire or trauma in your past or all that shit whatever yes of course yeah those things are are influencing the dis the the decision that gets made and it is up to you whether or not to dissociate from that, that decision-making process and call it an addiction, which you can do because, it can, because that, using that methodology is healing in some ways. And a lot of people, by disso especially if they have a lot of guilt, they dissociate from the externalized disease and it helps them heal. But at the end of the day, there are also 10 beers that you need to not drink. And that's 10 times in a day that you need to decide to not drink them. And you need to associate with that decision-making process or else the pattern won't change. So, um, dissociation and association, powerful stuff, right? And salvia can be your ally because it is a naturally dissociative drug. It makes you feel separated from your perceptions and uh, all in internalized processes. But at this point, internal, external, they don't mean anything because the chair that I'm on is a experience, just like my emotions are a experience or my insecurities are an experience. All of these are just uh, patterns within the data set that is rising moment to moment within my subjective field, which is, is it all me? non-dualism is it partially me dualism is it a, none of it is me that's a illusionism like um the recently departed daniel dennett proposes it's a, a free it's a free world of either associating or dissociating from all of the things in your life and you can do it strategically and meditation can help and philosophy can help and watching rad famous psychonaut youtubers on youtube can help um but ultimately it's something that you practice with salvia with other medicines other medicines are dissociative too even alcohol and stuff can be dissociative in their own way and then you can learn to play with who you are and who you are not and and it's and it becomes a mental playground We're going to end the video now.